Infinity is big. So big, in fact, that you will never, ever be able to imagine just how big it is. There is beyond a plethora of videos out there dedicated to helping you imagine just how big the universe is, or just how massive Graham's number is. And at a certain point, you just give up and say, okay, I will never be able to visualize these. My understanding will forever be limited to the small scale of the human. If you clicked on this video, I'm guessing that means you've had this experience yourself, where you're thinking about big numbers and you just accept the fact, I'm only ever gonna be able to wrap my head around numbers like a thousand and a hundred and 10, three, two, one, zero. We are just too small to ever really wrap our minds around big numbers, but small numbers like zero and one? You can easily wrap your mind around those numbers. I mean, one apple, zero apples. Piece of cake. You can also imagine all sorts of numbers in between zero and one. I mean, they're just as small. It's not any harder to visualize them, you know? Half an apple, quarter of an apple, an eighth of an apple. No sweat. But what about a millionth of an apple? Or a billionth of an apple? No matter how small you go, you can always go smaller without ever actually reaching zero. And eventually, those numbers will become just as, if not harder, to visualize than infinity. I would argue that these small numbers are much harder to visualize than infinity. Because at the very least, you can accept the fact that infinity is just too big for me to ever wrap my head around. But claiming that a number is too small to wrap your head around just doesn't make sense because, well, zero is the smallest number possible in terms of magnitude and I can wrap my head around zero pretty easily. But you can't understand just how small the numbers between zero and one get. Even though you can understand how small zero is, you can't understand just how small the numbers next to zero are. It is, in my opinion, one of the most counterintuitive things to think about. There is a rather important theorem in analysis known as the Intermediate Value Theorem. It's just the fancy way of saying if you have a function that starts here at point A and it ends here at point B and it is continuous, then it hits every single value between point A and point B. It's the reason why you can say at one point in your life you were exactly pi years old. Clearly, on your third birthday, you were less than pi years old, and on your fourth birthday, you were more than pi years old. So if you treat time as being continuous, at one point or another, you were exactly pi years old. You can imagine the number one, and you can imagine the number zero, but you cannot imagine everything between zero and one. In other words, your ability to visualize, your ability to think, is discontinuous. If your imagination is discontinuous, does that imply that your entire conscious experience is discontinuous too? If you don't have the ability to think as small as you want, how can you be sure that every moment you've spent on this planet is connected to every other moment that you spent on this planet through a continuous stretch of time? I mean, sure, the matter that makes up your body might have been here the whole time, but were you here the entire time? You can always just write off the extremely large as something you'll simply never have the ability to reach with your mind. Infinity is just too vast and too grand for a human to properly comprehend. But the small is well within your reach. And yet, you still fail to understand it. And that, my friends, is what I call the paradox of zero. And why, as fun as it may be to think about the enormous, thinking about the minute will always be 
the more terrifying thing. And well, that'll about do it for me this video. If you want to get that aftertaste of existential dread out of your mouth, you can click on one of these two end screen videos right here. This one, funnily enough, actually deals with large numbers, specifically how to properly name them. And this one is all about how to cook a chicken by screaming at it.